the eruption here 3,500 years ago, although not VEI-8 in scale, did have a small magma chamber. Professor Steve Sparks has spent much of his career studying Santorini. When I first came to Santorini and started to look at uh, the pumice deposits from these caldera-forming eruptions, I found uh, evidence of a dramatic change in the power and violence of the eruption. By examining the layers of Santorini pumice, Sparks discovered magma chambers could erupt with almost unimaginable force and spread their devastation widely. This dramatic evidence of a sudden increase in the power. Huge blocks about two meters in diameter were hurled out of the volcano, uh, reaching seven kilometers and smashing into the ground. And to do that, the blocks must have been thrown from the volcano at uh, hundreds of meters per second, about the speed of Concord. And you can imagine this enormous red rock crashing in and breaking up on impact. To understand why Caldera volcanoes could erupt with such power, Sparks replicated their violence at one trillionth of the scale. Okay, so we need this. In the lab, he modeled the reaction which occurs in the magma chamber of an erupting caldera. Yep. The problem is we can't go into a magma chamber, so the next best thing to do is to go to the laboratory and try and simulate what happens in the magma chamber and in the pathway to the surface. Sparks believed escaping volcanic gas trapped in the magma might be responsible for the violence of the eruptions. Into a glass flask, the magma chamber, he poured a mixture of pine resin and acetone. The pine resin mimicked the magma. The acetone modeled trapped volcanic gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Pine resin is a very sticky, stiff material, so it has some properties which are rather like uh, magma. And we thought that if we could get a, a gas which dissolved in pine resin, like acetone, then we could get a, a, a laboratory system which would represent uh, the, the natural case. Sparks then created a vacuum above the flask to mimic the depressurization that occurs in the magma chamber. When a supervolcano begins its eruption and the dissolved volcanic gas can expand, when the vacuum reached the liquid, it caused a dramatic change. The dissolved acetone suddenly became a gas. This made the resin expand, causing violent frothing and blasting the contents out of the chamber. These experiments give us tremendous insight into the tremendous power of gases coming out of solution in, in, in able to drive these very dramatic uh, explosive flows. But experiments in the laboratory cannot answer the biggest question of all surrounding Yellowstone. When will it next erupt? Scientists face a problem. They have never seen a supervolcano erupt. Until a VEI-8 eruption is observed and analyzed, no one knows what the telltale precursors would be to a Yellowstone eruption. Nobody wants to see a global disaster, of course, and yet we'll never really fully understand the processes involved in these supervolcanic eruptions until one of them...